Okay, Bismillah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to all of you, dear respected guests, friends, brothers, sisters, mothers, uncles, elders, any other family members I'm missing. Um, welcome to Institute of Knowledge. If this happens to be your first time watching or your first uh, this program is inshallah ta'ala titled Quran in Motion. Uh, and it is, uh, well, I'll let you see what it is inshallah. It's going to be inshallah an evening of uh, Quran and reflection upon the Quran in a poetic manner. Uh, and inshallah ta'ala leading this program will be my good friend Amara Shukri, um, who uh, is from New York City, for those of you that don't know him. Uh, but he has unfortunately decided to reside in Houston. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant him uh, success <laughs> in these endeavors that uh, don't seem to be very enjoyable. Um, no, they are, inshallah ta'ala. Uh, he is an instructor with the Maghrib Institute. He is a poet. Uh, he uh, writes. From t Do you write? You don't write. Do you have a blog? He doesn't have a blog. He's just a poet. He doesn't write. Uh, but he's a great brother, mashallah ta'ala. I've had the pleasure of having his uh, acquaintance for many years. And I look forward to what he has to present and share. I'm just as equally excited as, uh, as you all are. So I will hand it over to him, inshallah, to get us started. Tafadl. Tayyib, alhamdulillah, wa salatu salam ala rasulillah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. I'm very, very happy to be with you at the Institute of Knowledge. This is my first time actually visiting this community. And mashallah, it's incredibly beautiful and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless you and bless your endeavors and bless this community Allahumma ameen so we will um, the idea is basically just to present the Quran in a way <clears throat> that hopefully will be um, something that people can interact with in English so there is um, and to be able to communicate meanings in a way that uh, maybe even be easier to to learn and to repeat something that I found when I uh, whenever I would kind of uh, study a topic is you know the the Arabic tradition at least it has a, a concept called the, the writing of, of nazm or you know they'd be called manzumas and this concept is that to make uh, knowledge more accessible to students you would basically codify it in poetry you would codify it in poetry and that way you would memorize for example on any particular science you would memorize a poem and that poem would become like a mnemonic for you basically it would trigger that information for you and that's the idea and so I kind of noticed myself doing that <coughs> in English and so I've written a couple of pieces on a couple of different topics or a couple of different subjects and this became the endeavor of uh, writing out different tafasir, very short, nothing really crazy, but just short tafasir of verses of the Quran. And I hope that inshallah ta'ala tonight what we um, see will be something that uh, people will enjoy and appreciate inshallah. And so the way that we're going to do it is where, you know, number one, I needed to, uh, you know, find a master reciter. And alhamdulillah, couldn't find one, so we got Sheikh Muhammad. No. <laughs> so uh, we have Sheikh Muhammad with us, inshallah. And so what he'll be doing is he'll be reciting the verses, and then uh, he'll stop, and then I'll take over. And that's the way that we're pretty much going to go as we go over different, uh, inshallah, very well known uh, portions of the Quran or chapters of the Quran, inshallah. Um, an additional treat, however, is normally every time I've done this is. Uh, you know, the Sheikh has usually recited just one, you know, recitation. But we happen to have access, alhamdulillah, to someone who can recite for us multiple qiraat. And so that's the treat that we're all going to get, inshallah ta'ala, tonight. I'll let, uh, I'll let uh, Sheikh Muhammad basically explain the qiraat aspect of it. Jazakallah khairan. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah, wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala. Um, of course, this is not a class or an academic setting to go into uh, details about the Quranic sciences, uh, but hopefully we can just, so, as, so we're all on the same page and we don't feel lost when we hear some things that might be different to what we are accustomed to. Here is just a short Cliff Notes version of what we mean by Al-Qira'at. Uh, 
the first thing that's important to know is that the Quran, the Quran was always, since the time of its revelation, until today, preserved and transmitted primarily orally. This is an important foundational principle to keep in mind. We do have the Quran written down in what we call Mus'haf, in copies of the Quran, in manuscripts and whatnot, and that's wonderful. But the primary method of preserving the Quran and uh, transferring the Quran from person to person and from generation to generation, and this is how Jibreel brought it to Muhammad Sallallahu and this is how the Prophet Sallallahu taught it to the companions, and that's how they taught it to the generation after them, etc., until our day today is orally. Keeping that in mind, when the Qur'an was first revealed, the Arabic language was in its most pristine state, in its purest form. Having said that though, within the pure classical pristine ancient Arabic, there were multiple different, uh, uh, if you would allow me to use the term dialect, although that might not be the most accurate term, but for the sake of our conversation, multiple dialects. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the Qur'an to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and that revelation encompassed multiple variant pronunciations to make it easy for the various Arab uh, tribes and uh, renditions of classical Arabic to be able to recite the Qur'an with ease. With ease. Uh, the reason why I am cautious about using the word dialect is because today the word dialect refers to colloquial usage of the language, which is a corrupted form of the language actually. That's a problem. Um, but these, are, these ancient dialects were all part of the classical, pristine, ancient Arabic. So there were these variant recitations. Uh, and as they uh, became passed down from generation to generation, from the Prophet Sallallahu and onwards until our day today, uh, there are chains of narration, asanid, sanad. There are chains of narration. And these chains of narration passed through certain scholars that became very known and notable in their era and in their time and place for teaching that particular chain of narration with that combination of variant recitations. And so the people named that chain after them. So the recitation that we hear most commonly in the Muslim Ummah across the world uh, and, and what we heard in Salat al-Isha and what usually most of you have been hearing your, uh, most of your lives is the recitation known as Hafs an Asim. It is the uh, narration that has been named after the scholar Hafs who took it from his teacher Asim. That is one snippet of the whole chain of narration. Uh, and there are 10 of these. There are 10 Qira'as. And each of them has two sub recitations which are known as Riwayas. And there are some technicalities as to why those particular chains of narration were preserved and taught. And that is because they became the most uh, notable through those teachers and students and the chains of narration were the most sound and authentic. So that gives you an idea of the, the academic history behind it. Suffice to say that the Qur'an was revealed with these multiple variant pronunciations. They are all harmonious with one another. If there is any difference in meaning, those differences are always complementary and never contradictory. That is part of the miraculous nature of the Qur'an. Inshallah ta'ala you'll hear some of uh, some examples of that tonight, inshallah. Testing, testing. Okay, assalamu alaikum. So let's begin inshallah. But before I begin, can I start with a non-Qur'anic poem? Okay, so anytime I come to a community, like I mentioned, this is the first time that I'm here. Anytime I, I come to a community, I just like to ask people where they're from. So feel free to shout out where you're from. Just to get a, a, a good idea of the ethnic demographic that we have here. What y'all got? Pakistan. Who here is from Pakistan? Okay, just one person. Okay, very good. All right. Very good. What else do we have? India. Who here is from India? <coughs> okay, very good. What else do we have? Ethiopia. Who here is from Ethiopia? Okay, very good. Did you say Egypt? Who here is from Egypt? Okay, very good, mashallah. What else we got? Palestine, mashallah. Okay, anyone else from Palestine? All right, what else? America, who here is from America? Okay, <laughs> four people, everybody else is waiting on that naturalization. Okay, what else do we have? Yes, sir, Bangladesh. <coughs> okay, very good, mashallah. Is that everybody? Anything else? 
Yeah, anybody else? Okay. Algeria? Who here is from Algeria? Okay. <laughs> Very good. Okay, I'm going to rep Sudan. Anybody else from Sudan? Greatest country in the world? Mm. Okay. Is that everybody? Speak now, forever hold your peace. <coughs> so this goes, Sudan is my hometown. Jerusalem is my heart. I flash a Syrian smile. I've been Egyptian from the start. My kindness comes from Pakistan. My style Senegalese. Yemen and Somalia join two continents at my knees. A Mauritanian mind, Ethiopian legs, Bengali disposition. Moroccan passion, Turkish fashion, Indonesian precision. Wherever Allah is worshipped are my people like include English esteem, French cuisine, American attitude. I have history in Spanish soil and Mali and sand, a future shining from Khorasan. My present is where I stand. My eyes peer from Kashmir towards a Malaysian rising sun. My body's indivisible. I'm an ummah of one. Okay. Yeah, so I have to... <laughs> If you guys have ever been at a poetry event, this is going to be a kind of a poetry event. So the way that we applaud in a poetry event is how? Try the finger snaps. There you go. Try it out. It's not an innovation. Don't worry. It's not ta'abudi. Okay, that's number one. <coughs> that's what I like to call American style. But then there's also the Egyptian style of applause for my Egyptians here. How do you do that? How do you applaud? Very good. You just go, Allah, Allah. Go ahead. Try it out. Allah Allah very good alhamdulillah so that's also acceptable so we've got american style the finger snap then we have egyptian style which is Allah Allah and i remember one time i was visiting a community and those were the only two styles that i know so i said you know what we've got american style and we've got egyptian style so then one brother raised his hand and he said but what about pakistani style and i said what's pakistani style i don't know what that is and then he he went like this with his hand and he said vah vah so we have that style as well. So go ahead, try that out. Try you have to have the hand twist though. Va va. Very good. So those are our three. <coughs> and just it's <coughs> it's important in these types of events. There's there and alhamdulillah it's not like an academic class or anything like that. So it's very much about energy. It's very much about energy. The energy that you give just comes back to the presenters and it and it just makes everything alhamdulillah much more fluid. So what we're going to do is let's begin, inshallah ta'ala, with Surat. Um, let's begin with Surat Al-Ikhlas. It's a, it's a very uh, concise Surah. So uh, if you could begin with just the variant recitations and just stopping at every verse, and we'll see how it goes, inshallah. A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Ar-Rajim بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل هو الله أحد Now there are five chapters that with the word say begin. ثلاث إخلاص فلق ناس الكافرون النجن now the word say decrees the prophet upon who be peace didn't alter the revelation received not in the least and at ahad in description exceeds but to be brief the one and only with uniqueness indeed that doesn't cease. Allah samad A samad is the master who none speak after and the one you ask for in need and disaster but he needs no one no partner and no son no internal organs no nutrition is needed it's not a notion. لم يلد ولم يولد. He begets not, nor was he begotten. And the meaning of begotten has long been forgotten. But it means he has no children and no one has ever had him. And he negates children first before parents, though the circle of life is obviously oppositely apparent. Because most tracks to shirk that shaitan brings is by attributing to Allah not parents but offspring. وَلَمْ يَكُنْ لَهُ كُفُؤًا أَحَدٌ 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 وَلَمْ يَكُنْ لَهُ كُفُؤًا 
أحد ولم يكن له كفء أحد ولم يكن له كفء أحد He has no partners, no equals, no angels, no people, no updates, no sequels. To claim so is deceitful. To claim so is lethal. To all those who are seeking God, He alone is the one to be feared and awed. He alone is the one to be revered and sought. He alone is the one. And He loves the odd. Okay. Jazakumullah khair. MashaAllah, beautiful. All right, so we're warming up now. How about we... <coughs> We backtrack all the way to Ayat al Kursi. Obviously, the greatest verse in the Quran. The Prophet ﷺ asked Ubay ibn Ka'ab, and he said to him, What's the greatest verse in the Quran? And he said, Allah and His Messenger knows best. And he said, now I want to hear from you. So he said, Allahu la ilaha illa hu al hayyul qayyum. The greatest verse in the Quran. So he tapped him on the chest. And he said, may you be blessed with knowledge, Abu al-Mundir. Mm -hmm. And so, <clears throat> it's the greatest verse of the Quran. Has many, many different virtues. Maybe we'll get to it after, inshallah ta'ala. But let's get right to the recitation. So, bismillah. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. الله لا إله إلا هو الحي القيوم الله لا إله إلا هو الحي القيوم الله لا إله إلا هو الحي القيوم Allah is the default name of God Some said it means he who is worshipped Some said he who is loved And some said the one who bewilders all And some said it's a name not extracted from anything Nonetheless, he's the one that you will call and there's nothing that's worshipped other than him. I mean, there's plenty that's worshipped if you look around you, but there's none that are deserved to. Al-Hay is the ever-living. And a meaning that this name sends is that he's the only one, not family and not friends, that is with us from the start of our journey until the end. So he should be the only one the heart of a believer depends on. Al-Qayyum is the maintainer of every soul. Billions of creatures all around the globe, galaxies and heavens in another zone and creation beyond it that we just don't know. لا تأخذه سنة ولا نوم لا تأخذه سنة ولا نوم لا تأخذه سنة ولا نوم Neither drowsiness overtakes him nor sleep. And this verse refrains everything. And this verse reframes everything that we think we own. To him belongs what is ever in the heavens and whatever is on the earth. This verse refrains everything that we think we own, our family, health, wealth, every possession we've ever known. He does it with what he pleases because it all belongs to him. In fact, so whatever it is that you need, he's the one that you should ask. <laughs> من ذا الذي يشفع عنده إلا بإذنه من ذا الذي يشفع عنده إلا بإذنه من ذا الذي يشفع عنده who is it that can intercede with him except by his permission like 
who can dare to intercede or even dare to speak in front of God without permission on the day of great submission when phony peers have hearts filled with fear and eyes of humbled vision. يَعْلَمُ مَا بَيْنَ أَيْدِيهِمْ وَمَا خَلْفَهُمْ يَعْلَمُ مَا بَيْنَ أَيْدِيهِمْ وَمَا خَلْفَهُمْ يَعْلَمُ مَا بَيْنَ أَيْدِيهِمْ وَمَا خَلْفَهُمْ يَعْلَمْ مَا بَيْنَ أَيْدِيهِمْ وَمَا خَلْفَهُمْ Sorry, I have to get that on Snapchat. It's great. MashaAllah. He knows what is present before them and what will be after them. And they encompass not a thing of his knowledge except for what he wills. That's the verse. Meaning that he knows everything that has occurred and what tomorrow's song will bring. He knows everything that has occurred and what tomorrow's sun will bring. And everything that didn't happen, if it did, the outcome of everything. Billions of daily choices affecting our collective destiny. And we all know just enough of what he taught us. Just a drop taken from a sea. وَلَا يُحِيطُونَ بِشَيْءٍ مِّنْ عِلْمِهِ إِلَّا بِمَا شَاءٍ وَلَا يُحِيطُونَ بِشَيْءٍ مِّنْ عِلْمِهِ إِلَّا بِمَا شَاءٍ وَلَا يُحِيطُونَ بِشَيْءٍ مِّنْ عِلْمِهِ ولا يحيطون بشيء من علمه ولا <تصفيق> وسع كرسيه السماوات والأرض ولا يؤده حفظهما وهو العلي العظيم 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 الكرسي was said to mean his knowledge his kursi extends over the heavens and the earth, and their preservation tires him not. Al-Kursi was said to mean his knowledge or the place where his feet are placed. In any case, whatever it is, it encompasses everything we know of space. And how mighty is our God when all of this is under his power. And he maintains it every second, every minute, and every hour. And this causes him no fatigue, no rest, no breaks, no sleep, no assistance, no sharing, and maintains it all perfectly. And he is the most high and the most great. And this verse concludes on a beautiful basis. No matter how high a person ascends, Allah is still highest. And no matter how great a person gets, Allah is still the greatest. This is Ayat al-Kursi. Allah Akbar. Vah, vah, yeah? Vah, vah, mashallah. Uh, so, um, you just shared with us a lot of different a lot of different variety. My question that comes to my mind is, does the variety affect, number one, the meaning of the Qur'an? Does it affect theology? Does it affect fiqh in any way? Um, yes and no. Okay. So sometimes it does and sometimes it doesn't. Uh, the majority of the variations are simply phonetic. They're simply phonetic. The word is not changed. Um, 
And that's been the case up until now. Okay. That's been the case up until now. Um, but we will see some... Uh, actually, no, in Surah Al-Ikhlas, you had a few, a few variations. So sometimes you will have different words. We'll see an example of that in Surah Al-Fatiha. Let's do Surah yeah. Al-Fatiha next then. Um, but what's interesting is that point that we mentioned in the beginning, that when you have these different words, the meanings that these different words, or rather, probably the better word is connotation. The connotation, the feeling, the flavor that these different words give you uh, allow you to observe the verse from different perspectives. Sometimes there are different jurisprudential implications, um, but um, usually it's, uh, it's phonetic in nature and sometimes it offers you So usually you it's just meaning. literally just the accent? Mostly. Okay. Yeah. But, but there are variations where you have different words. Jimmy. Absolutely. And I know this might be a little bit too technical, but I'm just interested. Is it um, the script of the Quran? Does the script of the Quran mm. allow for all of these different varieties? That's what makes it miraculous. Okay. Is that the way that the Quran was written, the script of the Quran, uh, the way the scholars say it is hamalun li okay. It's able to carry without uh, drastic changes in the script. It's able to carry and offer these different words. Because if you think about it, the way the Quran was written initially okay. uh, was without dots, without Fathah Dhamma Kasra, Zayr Zabar Pesh, without any diacritical marks. What Zubar Pesh Dhamma? Fathah Dhamma Kasra. Okay, okay, okay. Got it. He comes from a predominantly Arab community. No, no, I'm sorry. No, I'm joking. <laughs> so I, I, that, I, I, that I didn't know that's how you called Dhamma Fathah Kasra in California. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so, so that, that, that's what makes, uh, that's part of the miraculous nature of the, of the script is that without making any drastic changes to the, to the skeleton of the script, you're able to derive all of these different words. So like if you open up Surah Al-Fatiha, you'll actually see that it's written Malik Yawm al right? Absolutely. Yeah. And you may not ever notice it, yeah. but the reason why it's written Malik Yawm al with a little alif. Is because sometimes the alif is not pr pronounced. Okay. And that's the case throughout uh, okay. different words in the Quran. Okay. Okay, beautiful. All right, so let's try Surah Al-Fatiha then, inshallah. So Surah Al-Fatiha, since this is chronologically the first surah, we're going to do A'udhu Billah Min Shaitan Rajeem and Bismillah Ar-Rahim also. A'udhu Billahi Min Shaitan Rajeem Jesus and Mark said, this sign shall follow the believers. A sign that will separate the true from the deceivers. They'll cast out devils in the Lord's name. So in reciting God's words, that's what we proclaim every single time that we seek refuge in him from Satan, the cursed and outcast. And so we begin. In the name of Allah, Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim. Allah pronounced a double L exhale with love. Allah, the creator of the earth and the heavens, the one deserving of our love, obedience, and reverence. Who's Ar-Rahman? Ar-Rahman is the one who in his mercy is extreme, and so his mercy extends to all places, things, and beings. Take the most wicked individual you can imagine in the land. He's still drowning in the mercy of Ar-Rahman. Mm -hmm. Ar-Rahim is the one whose mercy goes on and on and on and on and on and on. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Alhamd is beautiful praise with all of its values and levels and all of its ways not because of any favors bestowed or anything that's owed but because he is who he is and so he is the one deserving of that praise Rabb means master, sustainer, nourisher, creator, developer, maintainer. And Allah is as such for His divine construction. So praise is the most appropriate introduction to the conversation that will now take place between the master and his slave face to face. Now those two names were already mentioned, right? So that should suffice. But just take note that Allah's attributes of mercy are both mentioned twice. How the people think the Lord we worship is oppressive, I don't know. And every day He bestows on us grace and we don't deserve it though. Maliki yawmiddin Maliki yawmiddin 
الرحمن الرحيم ملك يوم الدين the master of the day of judgment and he's the master of the day of judgment in particular because on that day no challengers and no competitors none shall speak not even the whisper the terrors of that day will be enough of an inhibitor for that is the day where the kings fall silent and the powerful are humbled and every violent tyrant will be exposed to be but a flesh and bones and along with all pretenders be humble to watch the throne إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين. You alone do we worship. You alone we seek for aid. You alone that we worship. You alone we seek for aid. And worship is everything that Allah loves for His slave. Not just the ritual like fasting and charity and prayer, but the habitual, your daily routine, down to the very care that you show to your loved one, or perfecting your work at your job. If your heart is watching him, can all be part of your worship of God. But the only one deserving of perfect adoration, love, fear, submission is the Almighty above. And when no one is there, he'll be there for you. Call upon him, he'll take care of you. Guide us the straight path, meaning guide us to it, and guide us while we're on it, so we never lose it. The straight path is one, crooked paths are many. Light is one, and darkness plenty. Righteousness, righteousness is to recognize that this is your most oft-repeated request. For the scholar and his page, the ignorant and the sage, and everyone in between, for the scholar and his page, the ignorant and the sage, and everyone in between is constantly in need of guidance to their dying breath. They know the dangers of self-delusion, so they fear it so. Self-righteousness is to think yourself guided from years ago. صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين. The path of those you've blessed from before, the prophets and the righteous and more, the truthful and those who bore witness to the truth by giving their lives in an instant. Not the path of those who earned your anger or those who went astray. Earned your anger by knowing the truth and rejecting it. Or going astray by never knowing it at all, never detecting it. What you've just heard recited are the most oft-repeated words in human history. No passage, no hymn, no prayer is spoken more frequently on more lips, nor memorized in more hearts than this. Mm -hmm. 17 times a day, every time that we pray, this is what we say. This is what we say. Al-Fatiha. Allah Akbar. Allah Allah. Finger snap and everything. MashaAllah. Okay. That one's my favorite. Yeah, that's my favorite too. You know, it says Fatiha. But my, my, uh, my, uh, my goal is to create a new favorite for you. Okay. That's the goal. All right. So whether we accomplish that tonight, in any case, we will strive towards it. So <clears throat> let's go now to the other end of the Mus'haf, the Ma'udhatin. So we'll recite Surah Al-Falaq. And Surah uh, An-Nas. And um, uh, these two are of incredibly beautiful meanings. And uh, something that I've, you know, when I was reading the tafsir of these two surahs, just one concept that came to mind is the idea that these two surahs are the fortress that mm. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave to the believers. Like, come enter into my protection. 
because just recognizing that shaitan is such an incredible enemy to you. And there's something that I mentioned in the verses, but I don't know if it's really, sometimes it just comes very, very quickly. So you don't, um, you know, you don't really have the time to digest it. So I just want to say it now. In Surah Al-Falaq, you say, قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ الْفَلَقْ مِنْ شَرِّ مَا خَلَقْ Right? وَمِنْ شَرِّ غَاسِقِنِ ذَا وَقَوْ وَمِنْ شَرِّ نَفَاثَاتِ فِي الْعُقَدْ You seek refuge. قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ الْفَلَقْ You seek refuge in the Lord of the daybreak or the dawn or the creation. You're seeking, you're seeking refuge in the Lord, in the Rabb. And then you seek refuge in that one attribute from three things. From His creation. You seek refuge from the darkness of the night and the evil that comes with the nighttime and you seek refuge in the evil of magic these three things but then in surah an-nas you seek refuge in three attributes of allah so it's flipped in the first one you're seeking refuge in one attribute of allah from three evil things and in Surah Al-Nas, you're seeking refuge in three attributes of Allah from one evil thing. Allah. So what's that one evil thing? Min sharri al-waswas al-khannas. Shaytan. And that shows you just how evil and vile shaytan is. And I remember once I was just looking through the Quran to see when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses mankind. Hmm. When Allah addresses mankind, when he says, hmm. Ya ayyuhan nas, what is hmm. the thing that he addresses the most? Hmm. Like, what does Allah tell all of humanity, the Muslim and the non-Muslim the most. Hmm. And you know what's amazing about the Quran is just how consistent the message is with the Rasulullah's message. It's just it's not coming from anyone other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because hmm. there's no inconsistency. And so the you would imagine what would be the greatest thing that Allah commands mankind again and again in the Quran? Half taqwa. That's number one. Perfectly consistent with the prophetic message. He said that the thing that brings the most people to paradise is taqwa. That's number one. But then the second was to take shaitan as an enemy. Hmm. Again and again and again, telling people to take shaitan as an enemy. And so many times we forget. I would say most of the time we forget that we're actually in a state of constant battle with shaitan. Every single day we win battles or we lose battles in this journey of ours until we figure out uh, whether we win the war or not. That's the idea. So Surah Al-Falaq and Surah Al-Nas. They are Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granting us protection from all of these evils that exist around us. So it's, it's worth us holding tightly to it. So let's begin inshallah ta'ala with Surah Al-Falaq. Do, do you have a poem about shaitan? Um, it goes like... <coughs> uh, no, I actually don't. I tried to make one up on the spot. It didn't work out. <laughs> Inspiration for uh, yeah. another piece soon? Yeah, maybe. Okay, so uh, let, yeah, let's begin with Al-Falaq, inshallah. Okay, let me raise the microphone. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. قل أعوذ برب الفلق قل أعوذ برب الفلق قل أعوذ برب الفلق الفلق and the nas are two chapters where we're taught by the divine to come to a safe place a safe space where he assigns a shelter from the danger of everything the evil of every human, the evil of every jinn, the evil of every creature, the evil of every sin. And by reciting these words, you enter the protection of the king. وَمِن شَرِّ غَاسِقٍ إِذَا وَقَبَ وَمِن شَرِّ غَاسِقٍ إِذَا وَقَبَ From the evil that he's created and from the evil of the whispering retreater. From the evil of the dark night. Al-Ghasiq is the night the majority of the scholars say. Because under the cover of night is when evil comes out to play. 
and the wicked come out to pray and the righteous resign to pray. So you seek refuge in the Lord of daybreak and light from the darkness and the evil of the night. And from the evil of witchcraft and the blowing of knots. The practice of magic long ago was rightly banned. Talking real magic, not illusions or sleight of hand. For magic was described by the Prophet as a mortal sin. And magic in essence is an act that invokes the jinn. And from the evil of those who envy. Now what would tell you about how vile envy is? What if I told you that was the first sin ever committed in the heavens, inspiring Satan's arrogance to flare and for him to even dare to refuse a commandment? And the first sin committed on earth, making Qabil kill his brother, turning a family into a fraction. Now envy defined is pretty precise. It's not that you see something someone has and wish you have it too. It's that you hate that someone has something and wish that blessing was removed. You wish they didn't have that money, wish they didn't have that house, wish their kids weren't so special, wish they didn't have that spouse. You wish they didn't have that money, wish they didn't have that house, wish their kids weren't so special, wish they didn't have that spouse, wish they didn't have those likes on that Instagram account. And like fire burns wood, envy burns good deeds. And it creates animosity amongst those who believe. They create discord amongst the people, tension, hatred, and friction. They harm those who they envy, but they see themselves a victim. So how is envy cured from a heart that is diseased? Firstly, to know that this was a matter decided and decreed long before any of us entered this earthly abode. Secondly, when you find your heart whispering those evil thoughts, just tell it no. Don't hope they have less. Invoke Allah to increase their share. And shaitan will stop once he knows his whispers only result in your prayer. Allahu Akbar. Okay, beautiful. Alhamdulillah. I mean, your recitation is beautiful. I'm not saying my poetry is beautiful. No, no, the poetry be, is beautiful. That would be very self-serving. It would be kind of arrogant. Okay. Very good. So, Surah An-Nas. Bismillah. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Qul a'udhu bi rabbin nas. Qul a'udhu bi rabbin nas. Qul a'udhu bi rabbin nas. Qul أعوذ برب الناس. Say I seek refuge in the Lord of mankind. The Lord is the one who cares for you, the one who prepares you and takes you from one stage to the next. ملك الناس ملك الناس the king of mankind and his kingdom his kingdom is a different from his kingdom is different from all others not limited to a time or place not limited to a time or place and a reign that doesn't end <laughs> the deity of mankind a deity is anything that's worshipped. And if he's your Lord and your King, then he's the only one worthy of your heart and your being. Your love, your fear, your hope, your worship, and your submission. And the humbling of your heart, your hearing, and your vision. <laughs> From the evil of the whispering retreater. Now keep in mind that when it comes to the chapter before it, we seek refuge in one attribute of God from three of His creation. We seek refuge in the Lord of the daybreak from the evil of the night of magic and of envy. But here we seek refuge in three attributes of God from the evil of one, the whisperer, the accursed, the devil, the very worst enemy of mankind. We're warned in the Quran so many times to take him as an enemy. And to take him as an enemy means to prepare for war and to know the outcome of each battle waged and to be keeping score. And to be occupied daily with the task at hand, knowing that he won't rest until you're destroyed to the last man. 
Al-Khannas is the one who retreats because he whispers his evil into your heart and stays at that post. But if you remember the name of God, he's gone. He's ghost. الذي يوسوس في صدور الناس The one who whispers in the hearts of mankind. Satan flows in our veins like the flowing of blood, constantly whispering and inviting, suggesting and inciting, but his whispers for the believer are a metric that they can use. But his whispers for the believer are a metric that they can use because he only whispers to you things that you may approve. I mean, he won't whisper murder to someone who would never hurt a mouse. And he won't whisper drugs to someone when that's not what they're about. He only whispers things to you that are in your realm of action, where he may gain some traction and get a positive reaction. So if he's whispering to your heart major things, then you should be having alarms of danger ring. من الجنة والناس من الجنة والناس from the jinn and mankind now some devils are from the jinn but some are from the human race maybe from your own country your town from the same place may speak to you with your own tongue like you're staring into your own face. Just remember that lest you fall into their dark embrace. Allah. Allah, Allah. Jazakum Allah khair. MashaAllah. Alhamdulillah. You want to hear a funny story about <coughs> I do. Uh, me reciting this surah? Which one? So, this one right here. Okay. So, I'm sure you guys noticed that an-nas is, there are two pronunciations. There is an-nas and there is something called uh, with imala and nas and there's only one reciter who reads it like that. And, uh, and that is the recitation of uh, Duri and Abi Amr al-Basri. So this is the last surah of the Qur'an, right? So I'm going to tell you guys a funny story. So we're in the College of Qur'an in Medina. And in the program, the main class is Qira'at. And so this rule of a Duri Abi Amr doing imala of an nas when the scene has kasra, you learn it in your first year. And it's like so exciting because it's like a very unique thing and he's the only one that does that. And so nobody ever messes it up. But it's only this word, an-nas. nasi fil silah. Only the word of an-nas. Okay. So we're doing the whole Qur'an from cover to cover in the program and this takes three years. So by the last semester after three years, the way we read Qur'an in class is very fast because we combine all of the... Uh, all of the different recitations and we read it very fast and the whole class is reading so by the time you get to the last semester we're finishing the Quran and literally this is how we read because we got to finish the Quran so students are like it's like that right so who and, and so you go from person to person right to left and then one student after another so who has the fortune of getting Surah Tanas, the last Surah and we're a cohort together to, that we're finishing the Quran. Who ends up reading it? You Yours mean, who, truly. Who has the honor of the last surah and the last Alhamdulillah. moment? Alhamdulillah. Honor, pleasure, and also oh, it's a responsibility. So we're in the class and I just happen to be sitting in this seat and all these guys are reading, 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 reading. And then this guy finishes Al-Falaq and the shaykh is like, okay, next, and Nas. And we're going to finish the Quran. And some students brought like sweets and everyone's happy. We're coming to the end of the program, you know. And so... I'm getting ready to read. And so he's like, okay, your turn. And I'm like, man, I got this. Surah so Nas. I was like, you know. I've known this since I was like, was on yeah. my sleep. We've known about the, the one difference since, you know, the first year. <laughs> right? <clears throat> and so then I come. That's <laughs> not the word. <laughs> <laughs> and the whole class starts laughing at me. Wow. It's like three years you couldn't remember one rule. <laughs> like, sorry guys, you know, it's in the moment. So, so did the sheikh say no? We have to restart from the beginning. Uh, no, no, they just everybody got a good laugh, and you know, and we Mashallah. moved on. That's awesome. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. That's great. Okay, so uh, appropriately, we've come to the conclusion of this one. And Alhamdulillah, we're glad that you got through Surah Al-Nas this time around. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. But um, what I did want to share is uh, even, inshallah, 
Uh, firstly, Jazakum Lakhir for being a part of this. Uh, this is actually the first time I've ever actually done this. Um, and Alhamdulillah, I'm very happy to have done it here at IOK with uh, a very good friend of mine. Alhamdulillah, Jazakum Lakhir. Um, but even beyond that, this, uh, this concept that I described to you at the beginning, this concept of writing texts, um, is something that I've really, really enjoyed. And so I wanted to share with you guys something just beyond even the Quran in motion. I kind of uh, have other um, pieces that I like to call in motion. And this one was basically the 40 hadith of Imam An-Nawi. I'm sure you guys are familiar with it, right? And so... Maybe uh, not. Okay, so the first hadith. Does anybody know what the first hadith is of the 40 hadith of Imam Imam An-Nawi, basically, Imam An-Nawi is like this incredibly blessed scholar, okay? And by blessed, blessing is what? Ziyadatul khair. It's when you get more out of more out of something, right? This bottle of water can feed one person or imagine if it fed like or it quenched the thirst of ten people. You would say that it has baraka. Um, and so Imam al Noe, mashallah, in his life, he was just able to create such a legacy of knowledge that, you know, people spend many lifetimes and they don't achieve a fraction of what he did. And so even in his introduction to his 40 hadith, Imam al Noe, he says he says, you know, there are many people before me who wrote 40 hadith on different chapters. You know, they picked a topic and they did 40 hadith. 40 hadith on it, 40 hadith on it, 40 hadith on it. And I thought to do something better than all of that, which was instead of just having 40 hadith on a particular subject, that I would create a book that's 40 hadith on Islam comprehensively. And so that's what he did. And it became so famous, so well known. And that's part of what made him special. Uh, was that he, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed all of his works. Whatever he wrote just, you know, it turned into gold, so to speak. It just became like the standard. And something interesting about Imam an is that if you'll notice, this is like random, but if you'll notice at the end of all of his books, he always ends his books with a particular chapter, if it's a book of hadith, and it's the chapter of istighfar. Mm. And that's really beautiful. Like every, the 40 hadith, the last hadith you'll find, it's the hadith of istighfar. The, Riyadh al-Salihin, another famous work of his, you'll find that the last chapter is a chapter of istighfar. You'll find that um, al-adhkar, the last one that he has, the book of remembrances that he has, it's always istighfar. But in any case, Imam al nawis 40 hadith, uh, this poem that I'm about to recite to you is basically every line is a hadith. Every line is a hadith. And so it's a mnemonic for me ever since. You know, I, I've always been able to recall the 40 hadith just from this particular poem. So it goes. <coughs> the first hadith is what? Verily, all actions are by intentions. That's the first hadith. And the second hadith is the famous hadith of Jibreel Islam, Iman, Ihsan. The third hadith is the hadith of Ibn Umar where he says Islam was built on five pillars. The fourth hadith is the hadith of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud when he talks about the, um, the angels breathing into the womb of the mother, a person's lifespan and their actions and their deeds. The fifth hadith is the hadith of Aisha that talks about innovation, okay? So just follow me here. It goes, know that all actions are by intentions. And the deen was taught through angelic intervention. Islam is built on five pillars of might and the angels while in our mother's wombs did right. The deen rejects all types of innovation and the heart is the limbs temptation or salvation. This religion is based all on advice sincere and the sanctity of a believer's blood is severe. We don't ask about that which is obscure and Allah only accepts that which is pure. No. We leave what is doubtful and suspect and that which doesn't concern us, we don't inspect and to love for you what I would love for me and a believer's blood never be spilt except for three. Speak only good, if not, then refrain. Angers from the heat of hell, avoid its flames. No. Everything is to be done in an excellent fashion. Fear Allah everywhere, treat people with compassion. Anything that happens is only by Allah's permission and hayat was forever written as every prophet's vision. So that's 20. MashaAllah. Believe in Allah and be steadfast. Perform halal, avoid haram, pray and fast. Purification is equal to one half of our iman and oppression was forbidden to Allah and man. Everyone has something they can give in charity, even picking up litter, a selfless rarity. Sin is what makes your heart feel resistance and unease. Upon us is the sunnah in times of difference and disease. The tongue is the most common catalyst to the fire. About those things kept silent, we should not inquire. 
That's 30. Then it goes, mm -hmm. be indifferent to the world, you shall be of the zuhat. There's no initiating harm or reciprocating harm to add. Evidence is to be brought forth by the accuser, and he who sees evil must be its remover. Hmm. Be the servants of Allah altogether as brothers. Allah is in your service so long as you are for each other. And every good deed Allah takes and multiplies, and he is for his awliya, their hearing, hands, and eyes. He has forgiven us duress, mistakes, and what we forget. We are strangers in this world. Don't settle just yet. Perfection occurs when passions fall in line with the divine. And Allah will forgive all sins. And he will not mind. Allah. Allah, Allah. Allah. So that's the 40 hadith of Imam al noe So that's in the, si that's, that's in the hadith catalog. Hadith and that, in motion? That's hadith in motion. Coming, to a, <laughs> coming to a city near you. The last one that I'll, I want to share with you guys, and I don't, I'm, I'm smart enough to not s stay too long in between people and their cheeseburgers. Uh, but the last one is fiqh in motion. Okay? And mm. the one that I'll show, share with you uh, is a, a class that I took with one of my teachers, Sheikh Yasir Birjas. And so he used to teach us a class called, should I not do that? Okay. Uh, okay, no problem. So this was a, a class that he caught called the, the fiqh of love, right? So it was the fiqh of marriage. And hmm. I took the class and I condensed it into a poem. So I'll give you the chapter of engagement. This is the chapter of engagement. Anyone here engaged? Yeah, so if you're engaged, okay, good. So this goes, uh, for a correct engagement, for a correct engagement, express your desire. For a specific woman whose hand you wish to acquire, Inform her wali directly in person if you wish. Or send a representative who will better serve your in interests. The first type of engagement is explicit, a form very direct. The second is implicit, at a time when it wouldn't be correct to propose. In any case, the rules of conduct are still the same. Still not mahram, still covered with the modesty and shame because engagements aren't binding. They can be revoked at any moment. Mm. They're used for getting acquainted and making the resolve more potent. Ooh. And if she already accepted from a brother... <laughs> <laughs> he just said ooh I was like what is that like, what kind of hype is that he said potent yeah sometimes you gotta find a word to rhyme man <laughs> and if she already accepted from a brother then you must refrain for it's forbidden to undercut him as long as the pledge remains so the forbidden from engagements are but a few the forbidden from engagements are but a few a woman already in a state of marriage and that leaves two the one who's in her idda until she's through, and if she already accepted a proposal, that means so are you. <laughs> know that a woman desired will generally be one of four. Her wealth, lineage, beauty, qualities that men adore, but the one who is mentioned above all the rest is she who learns and practices her religion best. There are other characteristics that one could describe to aid the puzzle seeker on his search for a bride. To be fertile and a virgin, if your status is of like and the man be just enough older than his wife, contentment with what Allah gives and with what he withholds. If such a sister is found, surely she is a trove. Beauty is relative, still important nonetheless, as the coolness of the eyes will lead to the soul's rest. Allah. I said beauty is relative, still important nonetheless, as the coolness of the eyes will lead to the soul's rest. And the best mahar is that which facilitates ease. And the matter is the most blessed for both families. And finally, lineage should be taken into consideration as one's nobility should increase due to the combination. Mashallah. That's it. Mashallah. That's the chapter of engagement. I remember I had, you know, I was like, this was my first class that I ever took with the sheikh. I turned it into a poem. I sent it to the sheikh. I'm like, what do you think? Got his email. So excited. He responded back to me. He said, I think you should get married. <laughs> 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 I was like, okay. <laughs> so he's basically like, you're spending way too much energy on this topic. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Barakal fikum, jazakum al khair, everybody. It's been an absolute pleasure. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from all of you. And I uh, hand off the microphone to our esteemed uh, host, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Muhammad Ali Ali Sahib Sim Sim. Jazakallah khairan. Ammar barakallahu fik. May Allah increase you in goodness. And inshallah, we, can, uh, we look forward to. Um, hearing more pieces of uh, of poetic beauty from you, inshallah ta'ala. Truly a talent. Um, and it's a talent that the Prophet sallallahu encouraged. And even some of the Sahaba, we've heard of the famous companion, Hassan. And even the Prophet sallallahu sometimes quoted um, uh, poetry that was beautiful in meaning and very eloquent. It's just, it's just something with words, right? When words are, are beautiful, they mean something beautiful and they're used in a very beautiful way. 
they just uh, they just win you over. So Jazakallah khairan for sharing that with us and and for coming. I think also if I can speak on your behalf, but um, this is hopefully one of my motives as well. Is hopefully this program would be one that increases the love of the Quran um, in our hearts. <coughs> so inshallah, if that's something that we can walk away and appreciate, um, because there's a lot of rhyming and poetic. Uh, attributes in many of the verses of the Quran and that's something you notice even if you don't understand the words you hear it uh, and that's really beautiful that's something we can appreciate as well may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of those who listen to the Quran who recite it uh, who love it who interact with its meanings and who apply it in a manner that is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and before we wrap up uh, what are our housekeeping announcements where are we having food Shia? are there uh, there are arrangements for uh, ladies and gentlemen Everybody goes out that way to the right, inshallah ta'ala. Okay, so we grab our shoes and we go out that way. Okay, jazakumullah khairan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you all. Uh, inshallah ta'ala, we'll see you all at future events. Uh, just to give you an idea, if you know other people that might enjoy a, a gathering like this, inshallah ta'ala, a similar program will be taking place tomorrow night uh, at uh, the Islamic Center of South Bay, which is in Lomira. Uh, and then uh, Sunday after Dhuhr, will be a similar program with the youth group in the Islamic Center of St. Gabriel Valley. Um, and then Sunday night after Isha, a similar program will take place in the uh, Islamic Center of Northridge up uh, in Granada Hills, way up, way up there. Um, so if you know anybody in those respective areas, uh, please encourage them to attend, inshallah ta'ala, and, uh, and spread the word. Jazakumullah khairan. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Allahu alam.